I'm Amy, the greenhouse manager, and today we're going to talk about houseplants. Houseplants come in all different shapes and sizes, making them perfect for any lifestyle or home. Whether it's a tall ficus tree or small tabletop African violets, there's a plant for everyone. When choosing your houseplant, you want to choose disease and insect-free plants. Always check your plants for bugs before you buy them. Check on the undersides of leaves and close into the stems for any hidden bugs. At Canoopers, we always recommend when you're purchasing a new plant, to quarantine it from your other collection for one to two weeks and monitor it for bugs during that time. If you should see any bugs, spray with insecticidal soap or eight houseplant spray. Also, before you purchase a plant, monitor light levels in your home. That way you'll know if you have direct sun, which is perfect for plants such as croton, or if you have more of a shady corner, which is great for plants such as ferns and air plants. There are three different light levels you should check for in your home. The first one is bright direct light. Direct bright light is perfect for croton. The more direct light they get, the more colorful their leaves will become. Bright diffused light, where sunlight isn't actually hitting the leaves of the plant, is perfect for a lot of plants such as snake plant, pothos, and calathea. Most house plants prefer humidity to be around 50%. If you don't have 50% humidity in your home, there's easy ways to remedy this problem. First of all, you can group plants together. You can also give them a daily misting. Or you can use pebble trays under the plants. To make a pebble tray, you'll need a saucer, a small bag of stones, and water. Simply place the stones in the saucer. Once you have the stones in the saucer, fill it up with some water. The water level should be underneath the stones. Once you have that all in place, simply put your plants on top of the stones as the water evaporates from the tray will create humidity around your plants. Most houseplants prefer temperatures between 65 and 80 degrees. Most importantly, they like it where we're comfortable around the 70s. I always recommend people vacation their plants in the summertime so they can get fresh air and dust off their leaves. Watering your houseplants doesn't have to be guesswork. Many houseplants, you can feel their weight. As soil dries, they become lighter in weight, and after they've been freshly watered, they'll become heavy in weight. You'll know your plant has been thoroughly watered when water runs out of the bottom of the pot. Let your plant drip dry before you place it back in its original pot or decorative place. Most houseplants prefer to be evenly moist throughout the year. This would include peace lily, anthurium, African violets, pothos, ferns, philodendron, and ivy. There are a few houseplants that prefer to dry out thoroughly between waterings. Those would include snake plant, cacti, jade, and other succulents. It's a good idea to replant your house plants every one to two years. Some plants will outgrow their pots sooner than that, while others can remain in their pots for much longer. Plants like orchids like to have close bound roots, meaning they can be replanted in the same pot year after year. Other plants like ferns require a lot of moisture near their roots, and pot bound plants reduce the amount of soil in the pot, requiring them to be repotted into larger pots much sooner. When you're looking to repot a houseplant, you want to look for pots that are two to four inches larger in diameter than the pot that it's planted in. When you're repotting your houseplant, it's a good idea to make sure the new pot has good drainage. If your pot doesn't have drainage, such as these decorative catch pots, it's a good idea that the plant that you're going to put into it has drainage. When you're ready to pot, fill your planter with soil. Don't fill it all the way up to the top, is you're going to need to fit in your plant. If you have circling roots or your plant looks pot bound, break up the roots slightly with your fingers. Once you've done that, place your plant in the planting hole. 
You may need to fill in with some extra soil around the sides to make sure that it is properly planted. Make sure you leave one to two inches from the pot rim for room to water. When first replanting, it's a good idea to use Osmocote fertilizer. This is a once a month fertilizer that will slowly release nutrients to the plant. Always remember to water your plants after you've transplanted them. Over time, salts and fertilizers can build up in the soil. It's a good idea once a year to flush out those extra nutrients by running water through the pot for five to 10 minutes. House plants that stay inside year long will accumulate dust over time. It's a good idea to dust them off once a year, as this will help them produce more oxygen, remove toxins from the air, and produce phytochemicals that reduce mold and bacteria spores from the air. For house plants that have catch pots and saucers, it's a good idea to make sure that water doesn't sit in the saucers for long periods of time, as this can rot the roots. After you've watered, make sure you dump some of the excess water out of the saucer and pot. Many people ask me, what are some house plants that flower? African violets? and Gloxinia are perfect examples of house plants that flower. They will produce flowers three to four times a year. One of my favorite house plants is Anthurium. It flowers almost all year long, coming in colors of white, red, orange, and pink. Its waxy foliage is a great statement plant for any room. Another great flowering house plant is Peace Lily. It produces beautiful white blooms year round. Ferns love high humidity. They also have great texture to their leaves. Check out this crocodile fern. Its broad leaves highly contrast the maidenhair fern. Ferns are great for bathrooms or basements where humidity levels are higher and light levels might not be so bright. If you're looking for color, Croton is the plant for you. The more light they get, the brighter and more colorful they become. However, they do like a lot of water, so make sure you water them regularly. And if you happen to have a black thumb, snake plant is the perfect plant for you. These guys are hardy, requiring minimal water and light. They can survive almost any conditions. People often ask me what is a great pet-friendly plant. I have many to choose from. The spider plant is one of them. It cleans the air, it can be hung, and is non-toxic. We also have Neanthabella palm. These are great architectural plants that are safe for cats and dogs. One more option we have is the Boston fern. Again, these guys like low levels of light and high humidity, but they're pet safe and clean the air very well. Even if you don't have a lot of room for house plants, there's something out there for you. Air plants are great for small homes or apartments as they require minimal care and take up very little space. With so many houseplants to choose from, there's a perfect plant for everyone. Whether it's a bathroom, kitchen window, or basement, we have a houseplant for you.